Okay, students, we are talking uh, drill press safety today. I um, want to take you through the uh, safety quiz for our classes here at Wyandotte. So let me suit up here on the GoPro and uh, let's make sure that uh, I am not tilted too awful much. I see my light has been on here for a while. I'm going to turn that off so I don't burn out the bulb. Okay, so the uh, drill press safety quiz. Our first question, holes over blank of an inch should be bored at the lowest speed. So I was sharing with you a while back that we can change speeds um, with our belts on the, uh, the different settings up here. And I think there were at least 12 different settings. So anything over, the answer is one half of an inch. So if we look at the paddle bits here, here's a half inch. Anything bigger than that, we want to go the slowest speed on that or a uh, twist bit, um, the Forzner bit. This is an uh, inch and a half, so we got to go on the slowest speed for that. Okay, so anything over one half inch needs to be ran on the slowest speed. Okay, next question, question number two. Use only approved types of bits with feed screws or those of excessive length can be used. Uh, bits with feed screws or excessive length can be used, that's false, okay? We don't wanna use the ones with feed screws. What's a feed screw on a bit? Let me show you. Here's a couple, can you see that? Feed screw. Okay, we don't want to use that on our drill presses, okay? It tries to take it into the material too fast for what we're doing. So we don't want to use those or excessively long bits. Guys, um, I have the bits for you and I, you know, I, I don't stock those kind in the shop. So yeah, that, that's false. You only want to use uh, approved types, um, not with the uh, feed screws in them for this class, all right? Um, number three, mount bits securely to the full depth of the chuck and be sure they are centered. Remove the blank immediately. And the answer is chuck key. I've told you and showed you here's a chuck key, right? It's got a little spring uh, pin in it, so it, it can't stay in there. Okay, now it stays, yeah, it spits it out. So you don't forget that it's in there and then you turn it on and it throws it at you. Okay, but that's, that's the chuck and this is the chuck key. All right, so we tighten it down and center it with the chuck key. All right, question number four, position the table and adjust the feed stroke so there is no possibility that the bit would strike the blank the metal table all right so if we were putting this bit in um, i've got it lined up right now so it lines up with the hole you always want to check right because um, this table can be moved and we wouldn't want to drill into the metal table we want to double check and make sure there's no possibility of hitting the metal table over here we've got our forzner bit that is even bigger than the hole so we have to use a uh, backer board or uh, there's a lot of names sacrificial board okay so we can drill into it and not into our metal table next question number five true or false the work should always be placed on the drill press using a backer board just answered that one didn't i so here's our backer board or super uh, sacrificial board yeah so we can drill into it that'll also keep us from tearing out the bottom side of whatever we're drilling okay if we were just drilling through into the hole of the bed it would tear out but with the sacrificial board that we don't go clear through that supports it and we get a lot less tear out okay um, question six Work that will be held by hand should be center punched using a, you see your choices on your test, a scratch all. This is a scratch all. So if we were going to hold this by hand in the drill press um, so it doesn't wander on us, if this was our point 
that we wanted to drill, we would push that scratch all in there and make us a nice indentation. So then we could find that indentation. Is my clamp not gonna play nice with me now that I've got the camera on? <laughs> so I'm lining it up, right, with the, uh, the hole in our um, Forzner bit, or the, the point of the Forzner bit with the hole that I made with our scratch all. Then we could do it by hand or we could clamp it down. Um, whenever we can clamp, it's always a good idea to loosen your hands up and you can drive, uh, you can operate the drill bit with your hands free. Okay, so once again, work that will be held by hand, use a scratch all, okay? So you can find that at precise point and uh, otherwise the bit tries to run on you and it's hard to be accurate. Like on our cutting board, we had to go in um, exactly, I forget what it is, like two and a half inches by two and a half inches, then we would uh, find that intersection and use the scratch all so we could drill the hole precisely. All right, number seven, smaller irregular shaped pieces should be what to the table and held by some, or held by some special fixture. So yeah, clamp. Guys, we got some different clamps here. I've actually got my, uh, sacrificial board or backer board clamped to the metal bed with quick clamps and i've got my piece clamped with the c-clamp and i could put a c-clamp over here if i wanted to but i'm just going to hold it when i do my uh, drilling of the hole so yeah you always want to clamp especially small pieces on the drill press so it frees your hands remember we got to keep our hands six inches from the cutter head so if it's a small piece you can't hold it and keep your finger six inches from the cutter head, so we have to use clamps. Number eight, feed the bits smoothly into the work. When the hole is deep, withdraw it frequently to what? The shavings and cool the bit. That's to clear the shavings and cool the bit. Let me try it here real quick. This is pretty pit, uh, pretty thick piece, right? So I'm gonna turn it on. We're gonna go down. We clean it out. We go down some more. Clean it out. So, as you can see, we've got a lot of uh, scrap here, right? A lot of shavings. Um, so it's important to clean it out as you go and not just dive clear through it. Okay, so clear out the shavings, number eight. Number nine, almost done people. When using the hole saw or other special setups, have your blank check your setup. The instructor, me, okay? Any special setup, I should check it. So what is a hole saw? Let me uh, show you a quick picture. Let me get out of these two. These are the ones we didn't want to put in the drill press. Here's a hole saw, okay? So, um, yeah, that's, that's a big bit, isn't it? It could, I mean, they have all different sizes, um, several inches in, in size. So we would want our drill press to be set on the lowest setting. Once again, anything over a half inch, you start taking the speed down. All right, so that's a, a hole saw. Anything special, I need to check it out for you before you do the operation. All right, number 10. Uh, sanding using a sanding drum on the drill press should be done at the blank speed. What's the answer? Well, typically it's gonna be the lowest speed because a lot of ours are bigger than a half inch, right? And if you go too fast, you're gonna burn your wood. So the lowest speed, these are drum sanders. Did you know that you could sand with the drill press? So. Um, easy enough to do. Typically when we do that, our sacrificial board that we clamp down is going to have a hole clear through it. So let's say we clamped it down here. We wanted to sand on this one. So then see we could uh, 
our uh, drum could go inside of the hole so then you could sand, right? Otherwise, you know, it's not gonna sand your entire thickness of your board, right? Does that make sense? So uh, yeah, our sacrificial board would have a hole cut the size of our drum. So this drum is too big for that hole once we get the sandpaper on there, right? But uh, see how that would work? The drum would go down into that, that uh, sacrificial board or support board just a little bit so then you have a nice clean sanding edge. All right. Okay, we're identifying bits now. What does a countersink bit look like? I've got a few here. They're all different sizes, right? I've got three different sizes here for you. That's a countersink bit. Used um, so like a, um, a screw could be used to attach pieces together and then it could be inset into the wood. So um, if this was my wood piece, the screw would be inset flush or slightly below flush of the surface. Otherwise, the screw head pops up, right? And can scratch things and um, that type of thing. So yeah. Um, so those are countersink bits. Uh, next one, identify a Forzner bit. Well, you guys have seen the Forzner bit. Okay, there it is. There's a lot of different sizes of Forzner bits. How about a hole saw? I just showed you a hole saw, right? 